Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> What are you doing out so early? You're not very observant. Look at me. Uh Huh? Oh, that's a riding skirt, huh? I've been clear out to Sand Springs and back before breakfast, too. Alone? I like to ride alone. And, Matt, I jumped a herd of antelope. There must have been a hundred of them. That was too bad you didn't have a gun. Shoot one of them? Never. Well, I've seen you eat antelope often enough, Kitty. That's different. Well, you couldn't have packed one back anyway. Makes a horse pretty wild sometimes. <laughs> Wouldn't the horse I was riding? I think he was sound asleep the whole way. <laughs> Matt, why don't you come riding with me somewhere? Me? Mm-hmm. Go riding for pleasure? Why not? You know, Kitty, I took this marshal job to keep out of the saddle. You know, there was a time I was beginning to think I forgot how to walk. You're plain lazy, that's what. <laughs> All right, I'll go with you sometime. But, uh... I won't promise to leave all those antelope steaks running around loose out there. I'll scream. You won't get anywhere near them. Yeah, I'll bet you would, too. Sure. Hey, Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon? Oh, morning, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Say, you've been out horseback riding, Miss Kitty. Chester, someday you're going to make a woman very happy. I am? Mm-hmm. Matt didn't even notice my riding skirt. He didn't? No. <laughs> Well, you came up here in a big rush, Chester. What's it all about? Oh, it, it, it's Earl Heaney, Mr. Dillon, the fellow that banks the faro table over at the Long Branch. Yeah, I know him. Something happened to him, Chester? It sure did. Sam Noonan went out back when he come to work this morning, and he found Haney laying there. Somebody's busted his head open. Is he dead? Not yet, but he don't look good, according to Sam. Well, is Doc there? No, sir. Doc went out to the Tewksbury Ranch. He left a note on his door saying he won't be back till afternoon. Sam come to the office and told me about it. You better go see him, Matt. Yeah. There he is. End of the alley, Mr. Dillon. Well, at least Sam put a blanket over him. Good thing you come, Marshal. Is he still alive, Sam? Oh, he's alive, but he ain't good. He comes to every once in a while, and then he passes out again. Yeah. He say anything about what happened? Well, I didn't try to make him talk, Marshal. You any idea what happened, Sam? Oh, no, no. La- la- last I saw of him was early this morning, about 4 o'clock. I left him counting the money at his faro table, alone. He's coming too, Mr. Dunn. He just moved. Yeah. Haney? Haney, can you hear me? It's Marshal Dillon. Marshal? Yeah. Who did it, Haney? Who was it? Slugging me with this 
Six gun. Kept hitting me. Who? Tall fella. He came in when I was alone. Took my gun. All the money. Well, what did he look like, Henny? Uh, besides being tall. Real tall. Red hair. Uh -huh. And look at that. He's passed out again. He, he, he keeps doing that, Marshal. <laughs> tall man with red hair. I don't know who that'd be. Jim Bostick's got red hair. Who? Bostick. I think I know him. Yeah, sure you do, Mr. Dillon. He's always sitting around gambling over at the Alapaganza. Day and night he's there. You stay here with Sam, Chester. All right, sir. I'm afraid there's not much you can do for Haney except watch him die. I'm going after Jim Bostick. <laughs> out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Yes, filter tip smokers, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M stands out for flavor. 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 The miracle tip draws easy. You enjoy all the taste. And notice how mild it is. L&M stands out for effective filtration. 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 No filter compares with L&M's Miracle Tip for quality or effectiveness. L&M's got everything. L&M, light and mild. America's best filter tip cigarette. <laughs> High Street. My pot. Who can make it? Well, hello, Marshal. Take a hand. No thanks. I uh, I want to talk to you, Busted. Now? Yeah. What about? Come over to the bar, and I'll tell you. Hmm? Sounds important. It is. Okay. Deal me out this hand, gentlemen. Okay, Bostick. All right, gentlemen. That's the video. Huh. Hope this don't break my luck, Marshal. It's been running good the last couple hours. All night game? Oh, he started just after midnight. Ah, yeah, then you've been sitting with those men ever since midnight, then. Just huh? about, Marshal. What do you want to see me for? You know Earl Haney, Bostick. I ain't proud of knowing him. Oh, I got no use for him. It's nothing in particular, Marshal, but I never did like him. I see. Well, what are you asking me about him for? He was uh, robbed and slugged this morning. He was? Well, you don't think I had anything to do with it, do you? He said it was a tall man with red hair. And you're the only red-haired man I could think of. Oh, he's lying. He's trying to put it on me because we're enemies. You think he'd do that? Well, of course he would. Ain't he do anything to get me in trouble? He's dying, Bostick. That'd be going pretty far, wouldn't it? Not for Haney, you wouldn't. You know, there's something I don't understand. What? You're making a big argument about Haney lying to get you in trouble. When there are four men sitting over there to alibi for you. Well, I wasn't in the game the whole time, Marshal. I left for about an hour. What time? It was about 
Oh, four o'clock, I guess. It was. Oh, that's when Haney got it. That's when he got it. You're going to be disappointed, Marshal. What? I still got an alibi. Oh, you better have. Who is it? Doc Adams. Doc? Sure. I got a stomach cramp real bad, so I left the game, went over to Doc's and woke him up. He fixed me some stuff on a glass, and then we sat and talked. He said he had to get up early anyways. Well, I'll say one thing, Bostick. You don't think straight, but you think fast. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? It's Haney. He come to again and started asking for you. Says he's got something to tell you. You'd better hurry. He's awful serious about it. I'll go, Chester. But first, I'm going to take your gun, Bostick. What? What for? Give it to me. Here, Chester, you hold it. Yes, sir? You're under arrest, Bostick. Under arrest? Taken to jail, Chester. Well, no, no, look here, Marshal. All you got to do is ask Doc. He'll tell you. Doc's not here. He won't be back till afternoon. Well, I can't wait that long. I'm starting out for cold water in an hour. I want to be there tomorrow. You're not going anywhere till Doc gets back. Probably not then. All right, lock him up, Chester. Yes, sir. <laughs> When I got back to the alley where Haney was lying, I found Sam had pulled the blanket up over his face. He'd come to for the last time. And whatever it was he wanted to tell me, I'd never know. Sam and I carried him inside. Then Sam sent for a wagon to take him out to Boot Hill. We had to wait for over an hour. And when it finally showed up, we loaded Haney onto it, and they drove off. I stood in the street and watched him for a minute or two. And then I walked over to the jail. Hey! Who's out there? Hey, come back here. I out back. Mr. Dillon? Come out here! For mercy's sake, alive, I didn't think you was ever coming. He he had a gun hit out, Mr. Dillon, and he got the drop on me just as I was locking him up. He, he made me get in a cell here, and then he closed the door on me and left. I've got a key. Well, I should have held his gun on him the whole time. I had it stuck in my belt, though. Who, who'd have thought he was carrying another gun here? All right, Chester, come on out. I swear I've been... He yelling myself for it. You, you, you'd think somebody would have heard me, wouldn't you? He's got over an hour's start on us. Well, he's headed southeast, Mr. Dillon, toward cold water. How do you know? That's where he said he was going. Yeah, I know. I heard it. Yes, sir, but he, he told me again when he left. He said he knew you was going to be off mad at him, but he'd planned to be in cold water tomorrow, and besides, it wouldn't make any difference once you talk to Doc. Well, he kind of decides things for himself, doesn't he? Well, he is a pretty independent fellow, Mr. Dillon, but Doc will be back in a couple hours, so there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? Well, I mean, as soon as Doc tells you Bostick was with him this morning, then he'll be clear, won't he? Bostick tried to use Doc for an alibi just to stall for time, Chester. But he didn't know Doc was out of town. You talk like you think he's innocent. Well, didn't Haney tell you he was only trying to get him in trouble? And he was dead when I got there. Oh, well, me and Bostick was talking about it on the way over here, and we figured that's what he was going to say. I reminded him when he ran off, but he just wouldn't wait for you to come back. He said he'd had all he could stand to dodge, and he wanted to get out of here right now. Like I said, he's kindly independent. He didn't run because he's independent, Chester. He ran because he's guilty, the way any murderer would. While we're standing here jawing about it, he's out there covering miles. Oh, but a couple of hours won't make so much difference, Mr. Dillon. We can go after him if Doc says he was lying. We'll get started now. But if he didn't do it and we waste time chasing him, the real murderer will get away. Sure. I want Bostick, and I don't want any more talk about it. No man's going to break out of this jail and ride off like he owned the country. I'm going to get my horse and go after him before I get so mad I can't see the track. You can stay here and tuck your head off if you want. The 
horse is okay, Chester. Oh, mine got tangled up in his tire. Oh, the darn fool, that's what all the stomping around was about. Oh, my. I sure do wish we could have a fire to sit around at night. No, we can't risk it, Chester. From the sign on Bostick's trail, I think we almost caught up with him before it got dark. And unless he's riding all night, he might be camped within a mile of us. Oh, well, I... I, I didn't mean it seriously, Mr. Dillon, uh, about having a fire. I, honest, I didn't. I, I was only talking. I, 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 I wouldn't... Not take I, it easy, Chester. It, it's not you I got mad at today. It's Bostick. Yes, sir. Hey, you uh, still think I was wrong not waiting to talk to Doc, don't you? Yes, sir. I do. Well, I guess that's why they have generals in the Army. Somebody's got to make the decisions. Sure. I was sure wrong about one thing, though. Oh? Huh? I wish I'd have allowed us enough time to tie on a couple of blankets. It's going to be a cold night. Especially without a fire. Well, at least we got a sack of jerky. Jerky will keep a man warm just chewing on it. A plate of hot pinto beans will keep him a lot warmer. All mixed up with chili peppers, like they do down on the Bravo. Oh, my goodness, I'd give most anything I know for a pot of that right now. <laughs> you know, anybody who likes food the way you do ought to be a cook, Chester. I was a cook once. Oh, is that so? Where? In the Army. Back in 65, the spring written fell. But I quit. You quit? Oh, I don't mean I quit the Army. I quit cooking. Oh, why? Supplies ran out. We had to take the foraging for our grub. It's a funny thing. You join the Army to be a soldier, and you wind up being a chicken thief. <laughs> I like to think of a lot of men. That wouldn't bother well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Dillon, stealing food come kind of easy to me. I didn't have no conscience at all about it. I... What's that? It's not one of our horses. It's too far off. Now that's I'm closer. He's coming this way. There's one of ours answering him. Listen. Now, that horse is hobbled, Chester. Come on. There, I see him. Right out there. Yeah, he's seen us, too. He's standing still. I wonder how far he's come like that. Easy now. Don't scare him. Oh. Oh. Steady, boy. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, he couldn't have come very far with those hobbles. Not more than about a mile, I guess. How do you figure that? Well, it's been dark an hour and a half. Whoever was riding him unsaddled about then. Let's tie him up, Chester, and we'll go back the way he came. You're thinking it's Bostick's horse? Well, I'm sure hoping it is. I'd hate to surprise an innocent man into a shooting out there. <laughs> L&M is best, stands out from all the rest. L&M's got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy, lets you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L and M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L and M's got everything. King size or regular, L and M is America's best filter tip cigarette. We on 
hobbled the horse and tied him up, and then started off across the prairie on foot. A man makes less noise than a horse. We couldn't do any tracking in the dark, so we had to go by guess and hope we were lucky. But we weren't. And after wandering over the prairie half the night, we gave it up and found our way back to camp. There was only one other thing to do. And a couple of hours before dawn, we led the horse back some distance the way he'd come, hobbled him again, and hid ourselves in the high buffalo grass. And then we waited a long time. What if that horse starts back for our camp, Mr. Dillon? Ah, then we're in trouble, Chester. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this beach stumbling around in the dark. I like to broke my neck a couple times last night. And I was hoping we'd be lucky. If we'd found him asleep, we could have taken him without a fight. Yeah, doggone him. He probably slept the whole night all cozied up in a blanket, too. Shh. Quiet, Chester. Yeah. I mean, that's him. He's whistling for his horse. Well, he's wasting his breath. That horse isn't going to move. How are we going to take him? You stay on your belly. I'll stand up first. Quiet now. You dang animal. How'd you get so far from camp? i tie you up next time. Hold still now. i get these hobbles off here. Stay down now, Chester. All right, throw him up, Bostick. You're up. Now, what you come chasing clear out here for, Marshal? I'll take your gun, Bostick. Okay, Chester. You Chester here, too? Is that why you come after me? I didn't do him no harm, Marshal. Oh, Bostick. I didn't hurt you one bit, did I, Chester? Well, I... I, I don't understand this, Marshal. Of course, maybe I shouldn't have run off when I'd been arrested and all, but I don't like being cooped up. Besides, I want to get out of Dodge. I'm tired of it. Bostick, I don't know whether you're half smart or plain crazy, but we'll find out when we get back to Dodge. Down in a minute, Mr. Jones. He's finishing up an autopsy. An autopsy on who? I I don't know. You don't, huh? Did you tell him about Bostick? Yes, sir. Well, what did he say? Well, Mr. Dillon, I'd rather Doc told you himself. What's the matter with you, Chester? You're not even looking at me. Hello, Matt. Hello, Doc. Well, I've got a feeling Chester left it to me to tell you. To tell me what? Ken Scholes got killed, Matt. Well, who's he? He's the Farrell banker that was hired to take Earl Haney's place. Oh. He got killed and robbed the same way Haney did, Matt. Same time, everything. Any idea who did it? He didn't live as long as they tell me Haney did, but Sam got a few words out of him. He said the bandit came up behind him, so he never saw his face. But before he hit him, he started bragging about how he hadn't planned to push his luck again. But with you out of town, it was easy. He said he was riding off right away and never coming back. Well, I guess there's no use asking you about Bostick, is there? He was with me, Matt. Like he said. All right, go get him, Chester. Yes, you... Now, Matt. It's okay, Doc. Hello, Doc. How are you? I'm fine, Bostick. I'm fine. Well, Marshal, did he tell you? Yeah. Yeah, he told me. There's your gun, Bostick. Thanks. You ain't sore at me, 
Or are you Marshal? A man's been killed because I lost my temper yesterday, Vostick. If I'd been thinking instead and stayed here, it wouldn't have happened. That's bad. That's real bad. Yeah. Marshal, you ever get to Cold War, I'd like to buy you a drink. You would? Anybody can make a mistake. But it's a rare man that don't try to weasel out of it when he does. Uh, well, I'll be going now. Uh, so long, Marshal. And now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Mild and plenty quick on the draw. That's L&M for you. And the pure white miracle tip on the business end of every L&M filters out everything but the taste of the world's finest tobaccos. All you have to do is pick up a carton of L&M's and you'll see what I mean. L&M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Luke Brookman, and James Musser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Smiling all the while with Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Put a smile in your smoking. Buy Chesterfield. So smooth, so satisfying. Chesterfield. You'll also enjoy Chesterfield's great radio show. Perry Como sings all the top tunes on CBS Radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Jack Webb stars in Dragnet on Tuesday nights. Check your local listings. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama. It's gun smoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters.